Hey everybody, uh, I'm this Organic Dairyman. Welcome to my channel today, and today is Friday, February 15th. And it's sunny, sunny today, the wind ain't blowing, and yeah, that's a good thing. Um, yeah, so here's yesterday. Um, I took and put these uh, two bales over here and it didn't really drift in too bad um, the wind kind of died down in the evening so but it did help uh, stop some of the snow so uh, yeah so so yeah uh, yeah so Yeah, they say we're supposed to get a little bit of snow tomorrow, 40% chance tomorrow, and 60% chance on Sunday of snow again, so I'm going to set these bales off to the side for now, and I'll probably just um, leave them over here. So, it's like a little snow got in there, it wasn't too bad, it would have been worse. Yeah, let's see where I'm going to set these things. Um, um, I think I'm going to set them right over here for now. I don't think I'll need to put them there today. Yeah, so um, yeah, I'm getting to you a little bit later today because, well, it just doesn't lot of anything extra different going on around here today. I mean we do got some some things going on today. Um, my brother um, is gonna take the snowblower over to my friend's place um, to get the welding um, cutting bar, a new cutting bar welded on there. Um, he thinks he has one there in his place so um, he said he should be able to get it done tonight. We're gonna do that and uh, what else today? Um, what is, when we get done with chores, my brother, he's going to take the loader tractor down because uh, my neighbor that used to mail for us, uh, he's got Alz, Alzheimer's. Anyways, um, his wife, she takes care of him. She's like, I don't know, she's like 15 years or something younger than he is. Anyway, so um, she called this morning or earlier and she wants needs their driveway cleaned out a little bit down there so my brother's gonna take the motor track down there and do that this evening and uh, yeah just actually you know my neighbor's son he was cleaning it out with a pickup truck but you can only do so much with a pickup truck so it's gonna take the loader down there and uh, move a little snow for my neighbor not gonna know it. <laughs> I doubt he would even recognize who we are anymore, even though he used to come up here when he had was sound mind and he used to come up here just about every day in the summertime and yeah. harass us all the time and BS all the time. It's kind of sad, but yes, it's what it is. Yeah, so my brother's gonna go do that and and then an update on my pickup truck. Um, they called this morning. They said it was done, but yet, but yet it isn't done. Um, the oil pump is installed and everything is back home. But the thing is, in order to fix, um, I suppose that oil line that ruptured on there, they had to take part part of the front end apart, and so they have to get the uh, front end realigned or check it anyway. It might not be out of alignment at all, but they have to do it. And uh, in order, they have to do that in order for it to be covered all under warranty. So um, the guy that's supposed to do it is gone, so he won't be back till Monday. So he can't get the truck back till Monday. So I think it's been gone for about a week and a half. We've been out without our truck. I guess we can get by. So that's kind of that deal. And and I know I. Some people probably wonder too, maybe nobody is wondering, I don't know, about the soybeans. Um, we are not going to move the soybeans. 
I guess until the end of the month. I mean, they, they were supposed to come and get them in January. Technically, they were supposed to. That was what the contract that we had signed with the company said. They were supposed to come and get them, but they didn't primarily because the weather was bad. So I don't know. I'm a little bit nervous because uh, I just hope that they're going to honor. They're going to pay us what they told us they were going to pay for them. Um, at least, I mean, we are insured our money if things do go sour because that's why we're working with national farmers. If things do go sour, they are national farmers will pay us that money. So we need that money. We got we got some debt from last year that we got to finish paying off. We can't finish paying it off until we get that money. And it's kind of frustrating too because I want to get that money because that debt that we have right now over can't even think of the word. We're accumulating interest on that debt every day and it's adding up and what is it? And I'm kind of getting a little bit irritated, frustrated by it. So I would, you know, I just want to get those beans out of here and get the check and get that debt from last year paid off. It's costing us money every day that we're not getting that debt paid off. They're supposed to come and get the, the company that our broker lined up for us. They're supposed to come and get the beans. And they can't they can't keep dragging the heels forever. They gotta come. They gotta get the truck here and get them lined up. They have so many days that they run these beans through. Uh, a little bit nervous about it. We need that money. We need that. Money. But not all that money that we get from those beans is going to pay off the debt, obviously, just a small portion of it is. But it's just it's frustrating that when you want to get something done and somebody else is dragging their heels and not doing their part, uh, you know, all they got to do is tell us when they're going to come. And we're gonna send a truck to come get it. We'll we'll have everything ready. We'll make sure we get everything ready to go. I know the weather hasn't been the greatest, but and it's kind of a hard thing too. Is you gotta pick it today when the weather's gonna be good. The day when they come, it can't be a blizzard either. And that's that some of it. It's, just, it's frustrating because of the weather factor, and it's frustrating on their end that they're not. I don't know. I shouldn't complain about it, but we'll we'll get there. So um, yeah. So anyway, that's kind of a little stuff there in that area. Just kind of some updates on what's going on around here today. And uh, it's lower day. Uh, when I get done to the end of the chores today, I gotta work. Keep working on those taxes. Gotta keep chomping away at it. So I think I'm just gonna um, get back to you guys here later. I'm gonna finish up the video with something else here today that I'm gonna talk about. And so I'm gonna quit yip yapping away here and uh, let you guys or, keep doing this and I'll come get back to you here later in the day and talk about uh, yep, you'll see what I'm gonna talk about. So, yep, I'll check back with you later. Okay, everybody, I am back. Uh, we are all done with the uh, feeding chores. And my brother just left a little while ago to go down to my neighbor's place to clean out some snow down by their driveway. So he's doing that. And I just, like I said, I just got done doing some stuff in here. And for, for now, and then I'm going to go in uh, after I get done with this this uh, last video segment here. I'm going to go up and work on my taxes. But um, I know um, I felt like I should probably talk about it a little bit more. I know there was somebody asked like, how do we treat infections? Like if we have to do a, a DA surgery or whatever, 
or just like when DAs and stuff, we have to treat the infection. And I thought I'd just do a video and talk about DAs, um, what causes them, and how we deal with it when we have a DA, the different types of DAs, displaced ablamasins is what I'm talking about. And I thought I'd just do a video about that so I could, you know, it's easier to explain it in a video than it is to write talk about it down in the comment section below. But yeah, so anyways, yeah, for those of you that are just watching this video, um, are new to the channel and watching this video, I am just uh, doing a kind of a supplementary video to the other video that I I put out um, on uh, Thursday that I uh, posted on Thursday. So um, obviously, when you'll be watching this video, it will be Saturday. I hope you'll be watching it on Saturday. <laughs> so um, yeah. So anyways, I just want to talk about it and and. Hopefully I try to educate you, the viewer, a little bit more about it. Um, and I'm not going to fill you guys full of a bunch of baloney. And um, I am not a, a professional, I'm not a veterinarian, I'm not a nutritionist. I'm just telling, giving you this information based off of what I know and what my experience and what I've learned over the years. And uh, yeah, so the first thing I want to talk about is there is two types of DAs. And um, let me just pick a cow here. Anyways, okay, we'll use Daisy over here. Yeah, 278, and also we call her Daisy. Anyways, there is a left DA or an LDA, left displaced ablamasum, and there is a right DA or a right displaced ablamasum. And because I'm you know, obviously from behind the cow, that's the left side, that's the right side. And anyway, so, okay, um, those are the two types of different DAs. So, um, what actually causes a cow to get a DA in the first place? Well, it, it can stem from another number, well, it usually stems from ketosis, like from when the cow, something that you did, you did not do to the cow when they were um, a dry cow, in their dry cow period, when they're going to dry them off, and they are, um, you know, there was something that you did wrong in their feed when you're in the, when you were feeding them in, in your feed ration, how you fed them, how you treated them, whatever. Um, so, anyways, um, I'm gonna sit down here for a second and. Um, I have my phone here, and I'll uh, keep my phone in a bag. <laughs> bag phone, get it? Not bag phone. Anyways, um, so I'm getting this off of Crystal Creek's website, and they have an on staff veterinarian. His name is um, Dr. Ryan. Um, so I'm getting it right from the internet. internet, as you can see. Hopefully, you can see that. I hope. <laughs> Let me see yeah there okay so anyways this article or this thing is called the who what when where and why and how of ketosis in dairy cows so what is ketosis i'm going to try to keep this fairly short guys i'm not going to try to get i'll try to keep it short i can't promise anything okay um cows with ketosis are suffering from low blood sugar of the at the cellular level, when a cow's body senses that it is low on blood sugar, glucose, or energy, the liver breaks down body fat to form non-esterified fatty acids as an alternate energy source. Um, NEPTAs is the abbreviation, NEPTAs, are further broken down by the liver to create ketone bodies. Ketone, ketosis is the buildup of these ketone bodies in the bloodstream. So anyways, that's what it talks about. Um, basically, when you were feeding your dry cows, you weren't giving them, they weren't getting the right energy in their rations. So basically, um, they're lacking in energy. So let's go on here. Um, who is at greatest risk of developing ketosis? Cows experiencing a compromised dry or transition period are at higher risk of developing ketosis. There are five categories of dairy cows that can be deemed high risk. Um, over here, 
the cows that they are cows that either gained or lost body condition during the dry period, were lame at any point in the dry period or transition period, even if the lameness was successfully resolved prior to calving. Number three, calved with twins. Number four, had a retained placenta. Five, fresh, freshened with milk feeder. Okay, when are cows most likely to develop ketosis? Cows are, the majority of ketosis cases, 93% to be precise, occur between five and 30 days in milk, in, into their milking lactation. That's right after the calf. And um, many cases of ketosis are subclinical, meaning that the cow does not look outwardly sick, off feed or depressed production, lintheroarg, I can't pronounce that word, but in suffering from ketosis. Research from the University of Wisconsin Madison predicts that 40 to 50, 45% of, of dairy cows develop ketosis within the first 30 days of milk. The majority of ketosis cases are subclinical and are undiagnosed by the producers leading to poor re reproduction. One case of subclinical ketosis can result in a net profit loss of $330. So yeah, it can cost you money. Okay, why do cows develop ketosis? Cows develop ketosis as a result of either, number one, a carbohydrate deficiency, or number two, inadequate carbohydrate metabolism. Some producers comment, my cow has ketosis, but my ration must, be, must need more energy. No, cows can be on a perfectly formulated ration and still develop ketosis. The ration is fine, the cows need to eat more of the ration to increase their daily energy intake through, the increased, through an increased dry matter intake, DMI. Most cows develop ketosis because their DMI Dry matter intake is suppressed as a result of overcrowding, poor bunk management, inadequate feed volume, and empty bunk syndrome, lameness, etc. DMI suppression leads to a functional carbohydrate deficiency. If your herd is struggling with excess ketosis levels, don't ask for more energy in the ration. Ask how to, to get the cow more total dry matter. So, yes. Um, and they talk about in here different ways to check for it. Um, let's see here. Okay. The liver of a cow converts the energy derived from either their feed into blood glucose, which the cow uses to maintain body functions. If a cow gains or loses body condition during the dry period, her liver will become impacted, making it in, 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 inefficient at creating blood glucose. The cow may be eating well-balanced rations and have appropriate DMI, but the liver cannot efficiently create blood glucose from the feedstuff due to its fat impaction. Fatty liver leads to inadequate carbohydrate metabolism and subsequent sub, ketosis. How do I test for ketosis? The first step is, is Stopping the profit loss associated with ketosis, finding the cows that have ketosis. Remember, many cases are subclinical, and um, the cows may look not look outwardly sick. There are five different ketosis detection tools you can use in your farm. Each ketosis screening test has its own set of pros and cons. The decision about what screening test to use should be critically evaluated. The chart above, well, they got a chart here. Um, what we use to test ours is, um, let me zoom in on here, I don't know how well you guys can see this. We use a precision blood meter, kind of like that, and this, this, I don't think that blood meter is, they use it anymore, they change it. And then we use, um, yeah, these, these keto tests, oh wait, um, yeah, uh, yeah. You get you get you get strips that come with that your blood meter. Ten, ten strips that come in there. And that's what we use. It's the same thing like a diabetic, like they use to um, check their blood sugar level. Okay. Do not. Let's see. Okay. 
Okay, it goes on to say, do not rely on your ability to smell ketones bodies on a cow's breath. By the time a producer can smell the ketones, the cow's breath, she is severely ketotic. So if you, if you could smell it, it's already, it's way advanced. So that blood meter will help you catch it sooner. So the best thing is like so many days after the cow has freshened, maybe like three, three to five days after, maybe three days even after you Take up, you know, take that blood meter. Um, um, here, usually what you do um, with a cow is you lift up their, you know, their tail head and lift up their tail and you, you grab a sample of, um, pull a little blood out of the back vein out of there. They send a, a syringe with you and you just pull a sample of blood out of them. I guess technically anywhere where you can get blood. From a cow, I mean, you could technically get it from their jugular vein, but they usually recommend the tail head is where you get the, the blood from. And uh, so, yeah. And there's different options for treating ketosis, but like I say, if ketosis does not, if you get too late in treating it, typically the cow will go off feet. And that's what causes the cows to get a DA because they go off feet. If you catch it soon enough, and treat it soon enough. There are different options for treating ketosis. Um, um, obviously, you can use um, the best thing to do is treat them as like 50%. Um, uh, it's a 50% dextrose. I don't have a bottle here with me. Um, so where where do you treat? Where do I treat in the vein or orally? Okay, so research has proven that oral energy treatment has numerous benefits over IV glucose. The Crystal Creek, that's who we work with, Crystal Creek, ketosis protocol is totally daily dose of 10 ounces of cow quench. And Crystal Creek has this, you know, this is for if you're organic, um, if you're obviously conventional, you can use propylene glycol. I do think they actually did approve propylene glycol for organic use. I'm not 100% for sure on that, but don't take my word on Ashley certifier. Um, that treatment can be ha can be had and given once in the morning and once in the evening can be all at once. Research evaluating smaller dose of oral energy like cow quench twice a day versus larger dose once a day showed no difference in recovery. And I might emphasize too here, the earlier detection, the better the results will be. So with this um, cow quench that they sell. So this is doing it orally, it's not doing it IV, you know, obviously, if it's severe enough, you're going to want to do an IV of 50% dextrose. Okay, so treatment should continue until the ketosis is dissolved by negative screening tests listed in the charts provided. Oral energy supplement is preferred over IV because it raises the blood glucose levels more gently over time. It is likely to lead to blood glucose spike and subquenchant subquenchant crash afterwards. If an IV dextrose, if an IV you know, when you're IVing them in the neck. If it is used, only use 250 milliliters. So only, and that's a mistake a lot of people make. I didn't realize this either, but when you give a bottle of, of 50, that 50% 50 dextrose, don't give the cow, don't IV the whole bottle to the cow. Only do half the amount that's in the bottle. Never do the whole one because you're actually giving them too much. You're giving them too much and they'll have a crash and they could, go back into it again. The, the ideal behind the IV of the dextrose is that you get the cow, it, 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 um, it, re, it does, what else, what else, what else, it boosts um, the blood sugar, or the glucose levels in there. And so that makes it, makes them feel good. And so therefore they're gonna eat better and they're gonna get their energy needs and you know, in hopes that they're not gonna go into a, a D, lapse into a DA. That's the whole idea behind giving them the, the IV only if it's severe. Like I say, it, it gets their, the, the glucose levels up there. I think it's up, of course it would be up. Anyway, so yeah, that, that's what you wanna do. You wanna get there. Um, so yeah, so only give half the amount that's in the bottle. I know that sounds count, counterintuitive, but it's true. Okay, mechanism to apply this decrease the blood sugar levels within 12 hours. Rapidly raising blood glucose levels from excess IV dextrose will cause the 
The sanity center of the brain, the part responsible for causing cows to eat, to shut down and will lead to decreased dry matter intake, further exaggerating the ketosis. Cows legitimate clinical signs of nervous ketosis too. So that's what happens if you get too much, if you raise the, the blood sugar levels, you know, if you raise if you rapidly raise the blood glucose levels too fast, and that's why you don't want to give um, the full bottle. You just you know because it raises them some but not too high. You know, you, you, and that's how it works. In conclusion, ketosis is costly and relevant disease in dairy industry. Screening for and treating ketosis will keep your cows healthier and help them more profitable. For additional information regarding, check out Crystal Creek's website, www.crystalcreeknatural.com. Yeah, so if you really want more information, the best thing is to go in and um, contact Crystal Creek. Um, maybe I'll put their website down in the link in the description, so be sure to go down in the description to check out Crystal Creek's website. Um, and we have been dealing with um, Crystal Creek now quite a while and we've had a lot of good success with dealing with them. Okay, so now pretty much if you heard me <laughs> um, about the um, dealing with the, um, the whole ketosis deal and the ketosis is what causes them to go off to feed and what makes them get keto or gets a DA. So actually now what a DA is Displaced apple maids. And the cow, technically, they do not have four stomachs. They have four stomach compartments. Um, obviously, you know, the rumen, which is kind of right in here, in this area, because if you hold your hand in here,